You know, I, I kind of think, I'm beginning to think that San Jose is ready for the political revolution. And I want to tell you, I've spoken before many groups. This is the loudest group I've ever heard. And before I go any further, it is my honor to introduce to you the next First Lady of the United States. Let me, let me thank all of those who have gone before me today. Let me thank the Kitty Cat Fan Club for their music. Let me thank the Joyce Manor Band. Let me thank Las Cafeteras Band. Let me thank Jack Johnson. Let me thank Jamie McDowell. Let me thank Gloria Esteba. Let me thank Hanson Chu. And let me thank one of the great writers in America, Eve Ensler. And let me thank Representative Ro Khanna. Ro has not only been all over this country for this campaign, Ro has been a great congressman for this district. Thank you, Ro Khanna. Now this campaign this campaign is about two fundamental issues. Issue number one, together we are going to defeat the most dangerous president in the modern history of this country. No matter what your political view may be, the American people understand we do not want a pathological liar as President of the United States. No matter what your political view may be, the American people know we do not want a corrupt administration. And no matter what your political view may be, we know that we want a president who has read the Constitution of the United States. So let me say to Donald Trump, nobody in America is above the law, not even you. And the American people understand that in the year 2020, we will not tolerate a president who is a racist. We will not tolerate a president who is a sexist. We will not tolerate a president who is a homophobe who is a xenophobe, who is a religious bigot. This country, from the days of the terrible things done to the Native American people, to the horrors of slavery, we have fought against discrimination. Trump is not going to stop us. But not only do we have a pathological liar as president, we have somebody who is a fraud. It is 2016 campaign. 
He told the American people he was going to provide health care to everybody. Remember that? He lied. He didn't try to provide health care to everybody. He tried to throw 32 million people off the health care they have. At a time of massive income and wealth inequality, Trump told the American people his tax plan would not benefit his billionaire friends. He lied. 83% of the benefits of his tax plan over a 10-year period went to the top 1%. In 2016, Trump told the American people that he was a different type of Republican. He would not cut Medicaid, Medicare, or Social Security. He lied. His budget calls for massive cuts to Medicaid, Medicare, and Social Security. Now, let me tell you why we are going to win the Democratic nomination. Why we're going to win here in California. And why we are going to defeat and defeat badly Donald Trump. We are going to win because we have the strongest grassroots movement, multiracial, multigenerational. In the history of this country. Right here in California, our volunteers have knocked on more than one million doors. And they have done the same in Iowa, in New Hampshire, in Nevada, in South Carolina. Our campaign does not have a super PAC. We don't want a super PAC. We don't need a super PAC. Because this campaign gets its financial support from the working families of this country. This campaign has received more campaign contributions from more Americans than any campaign at this point in the history of the United States of America. And the average, the average contribution is $18.50 apiece. And that is what a grassroots campaign is about. It's about teachers contributing 10 bucks. It's about workers at Amazon and Target and taxi cab drivers. It's about ordinary Americans standing up and saying, we want a government that works for all of us, not just the few. Now, as some of you may know, the corporate establishment is getting nervous. I read something the other day that some lobbyists for the military-industrial complex 
was getting very upset because we might end endless wars. We might end outrageous cost overruns. We might actually do an audit of the Pentagon. So that we don't have to spend more money on the military than the next 11 nations combined. And then there was a guy on Wall Street who was very, very upset. He was worried that we're going to ask Wall Street to start paying their fair share of taxes. And then you got the drug companies out there, they're shaking in their boots. Drug companies are corrupt. They've been ripping off the American people for years. In some cases, they actually charge us 10 times more for the same exact prescription drugs sold in Canada and in other countries. And then the insurance industry, wow, they're getting very nervous. Imagine that, that the United States might do what every other major country on earth does, guarantee health care to all people as a human right. Corporate elite are getting nervous, and the political establishment is getting nervous as well. And some of the leaders in the Democratic establishment are saying, my God, look at the turnout here. What's going on? Imagine that we have a Democratic Party which is composed and led by working people in this country. Imagine a Democratic Party which opens the doors and welcomes young people into the party. Now, many of the political and media pundits, their new their new approach toward us, they're getting nervous, and their new approach is, well, you know, Bernie's a nice guy, but he can't beat Trump. He can't win. <laughs> well, for a start, I would suggest that they take a look at the last 75 national polls in which we beat Trump 70 out of 75 times. Take a look at battleground states like Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan. We beat Trump. And here is the truth. This is a political reality. Do not underestimate Donald Trump. He may be a liar. He may try to undermine American democracy. He may merge federal agencies into his campaign. He may say anything about anybody, but he will be a formidable opponent. And the only way we beat Trump is with the largest voter turnout in the history of this country.
And that is what our campaign is uniquely capable of doing. Our campaign is reaching out to millions of working people who have given up on the political process because they think the establishment has turned its back on them. They are working two or three jobs. They cannot afford health care. They're worried about what happens when they retire. And they have said, why should I vote? But we are giving them a reason to vote. And we are opening up the door for young people in an unprecedented way to get involved in the political process. The very good news is that the young generation today is the most progressive young generation in the history of this country. This is a generation that is leading our country in fighting climate change. It is a generation that's leading our country in fighting for sane gun safety legislation. It is a generation which is anti-racist, anti-sexist, anti-homophobia, anti-xenophobia, and anti-religious bigotry. In other words, this is a generation that is exactly the opposite of what Donald Trump stands for. That's the good news. The bad news is that this generation does not vote in the kinds of numbers that we need. So today I am here to ask you, to beg of you, let us reach out to young people all across this state, all across this country. Tell them that you're tired of hearing them complain about student debt, low wages, sexism, whatever. Tell them that we need them at our side in the political struggle for justice. Now, let me mention something. Uh, Joe Biden is a friend of mine. No, 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 no. But here is the point that we got to be honest about this. We got to be honest and we have to say which campaign can beat Trump. Joe Biden, at a time when the American people are sick and tired of endless wars, of the terrible death rate that we have seen from these wars, the trillions of dollars we have spent on these wars, please do not forget Joe Biden voted for the war in Iraq. And that was the worst political decision ever made by the United States Congress. And I'm proud to tell you that I helped lead the opposition to getting us into that war. At a time when the middle class of this country is struggling, Joe Biden voted for terrible trade agreements like NAFTA and PNTR with China. 
that cost us millions of good paying jobs. Joe Biden, Joe Biden voted for a bankruptcy bill which hurt the working families of this country big time. And time and again, Joe was on the floor of the Senate fighting for a balanced budget amendment that would have cut Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and veterans' needs. Now, my point here is not to just be negative about Joe. My point is to ask you all, what campaign is going to defeat Donald Trump? You cannot, you're not going to be able, we are not going to be able to defeat Trump when Trump puts his ads up on television about a candidate who wanted to cut Social Security, who supported disastrous trade agreements. We need a campaign that speaks to the needs of the working families of this country. That is our campaign. And the reason we are going to win is we don't take money from billionaires. We demand that they start paying their fair share of taxes. This is the campaign that says that if you work 40 hours a week in the wealthiest nation in the world, you should not be living in poverty. That is why we're going to raise the minimum wage to at least $15 an hour. This is the campaign that says women should not make 80 cents on the dollar compared to men. Equal pay for equal work. And this is the campaign that says when millions of workers in this country want to join unions, we're going to make it easier for workers to join unions. Under our administration, in four years, we're going to double union membership in this country. This is the campaign that says we can create millions of good-paying union jobs rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure. And this is the campaign which says we're going to make fundamental changes to our national priorities. And that means we are going to put education at the top of the list. We believe in high quality, universal, affordable child care. We believe that all of our children are entitled to the best public school education in the world. And we believe that all of our people, regardless of income, have a right to a higher education. And that is why we're going to make public colleges and universities tuition free. And if Congress can give tax breaks to billionaires, under the Trump administration, under our administration, we can cancel all student debt. Our, our campaign is the campaign that has said from day one 
Health care is a human right, not a privilege. And together, we are going to end the international embarrassment of the United States being the only major country on Earth not to guarantee health care to all people. And I want to thank the National Nurses United Union and all of the other unions in this country who are standing with us to say that it is totally absurd that we are spending twice as much per capita on health care as any other country, and yet 87 million of us are uninsured or underinsured. Totally absurd. 30,000 Americans die every year because they don't get to a doctor when they should. Unbelievably cruel that a half a million Americans go bankrupt because of medically related debt. In America, you should not suffer financial ruin because you're struggling for your life with cancer or heart disease or Alzheimer's. We're going to put an end to that. <laughs> Medicare for all means no more premiums, no more co-payments, no more deductibles, no more out-of-pocket expenses. And because we're going to lower prescription drugs in this country, nobody pays more than $200 a year for prescription drugs. <laughs> Medicare for all means dental care. Hearing aids, eyeglasses, home health care. And because we end the $100 billion in profiteering from the health care industry, and because we simplify an enormously complicated bureaucracy which wastes hundreds of billions of dollars trying to administer thousands of private plans, the average American family will pay substantially less on the Medicare for all than they're paying today. Our campaign is the campaign that says to the fossil fuel industry that your short-term profits are not more important than the future of this planet. <laughs> Ours is the campaign that says we can create millions of good paying jobs through a Green New Deal. <laughs> As we transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energy. Now, Donald Trump embarrasses us every day. But in one way, he is hurting not only our country, but the entire world, and that is Trump believes that climate change is a hoax. Well, I believe that Donald Trump is a hoax. And our administration, now you're ready for a really radical idea? Okay. Now we have EMS services nearby if anybody collapses, but here it comes. Our administration 
will believe in science. Now I know, I know that in this day and age, that's a radical idea, but sometimes you gotta be out there. But what that means in a very serious sense, you all know what the scientists are telling us. And they are telling us that climate change is an existential threat to our planet, that we must act as boldly and aggressively as humanly possible if we are gonna leave this planet in a way that is healthy and habitable to our kids and future generations. And you know what the President of the United States does not know, that climate change is not only real, but that it is a global threat, not only an American issue, and here is my promise to you, that as president, I will do everything possible to reach out to the people in China, in Russia, in Pakistan, in India, all over the world, and make the case that maybe, just maybe, instead of spending $1.8 trillion on weapons of destruction, maybe we should spend that money on fighting our common enemy, climate change. This is, this is a campaign that is trying to be honest with the American people and not shove the important issues under the rug. And one of the issues that we cannot ignore anymore is the fact that we have a broken and racist criminal justice system. This is America. We should not have more people in jail today than any other country on earth. Disproportionately African American, Latino, and Native American. What our administration will be about is investing in our young people in jobs and education. Not more jails and incarceration. Today, unbelievably, 400,000 people at this moment are behind bars not having been convicted of anything. They are in jail because they're too poor to afford cash bail. We are going to eliminate cash bail in this country. We are going to end private prisons and detention centers. Now, it turns out that the President of the United States could do some interesting things through executive orders. And one of them is to make marijuana legal in every state in the country. Let me ask you all, let me ask you all a question. How many people here know somebody who was arrested for possession of marijuana? That's why we're gonna move to expunge the records of people arrested for possession of marijuana. And when we talk about broken and racist systems, 
We have got to bring a major overhaul to our immigration system. I am the son of an immigrant. My father came to this country from Poland at the age of 17 with no money, couldn't speak a word of English, had very little education. I have some sense of what the immigrant experience is about. On day one, we end the demonization of the undocumented in this country. <laughs> On day one, we sign an executive order re-establishing the legal status of the 1.8 million young people and their parents eligible for DACA. On day one, we end a border policy which allows federal agents to snatch babies from the arms of their mothers. And together, our administration will do what the American people want, pass comprehensive immigration reform and a path toward citizenship for the undocumented. From coast to coast, all of us are horrified and disgusted about the amount of gun violence in this country. And here is my promise to you. Our administration will have the strongest gun safety legislation in the history of this country. Our administration will listen to the American people, not the NRA. We will move toward universal background checks. Nobody with a violent history, including domestic violence, should own a gun. We will end the gun show loophole. And we will do what the American people want, and that is to ban the sale and distribution of assault weapons in this country. Now, I'm a United States senator, and I hear a lot of speeches on the floor of the Senate from right-wing Republicans. See, you're booing, but I got to listen to those speeches. And over and over again, their mantra is, they believe in small government and getting the government off the backs of the American people. That's their mantra. Well, I say to those hypocrites, if you believe in getting the government off the backs of the American people, understand that it is women who have a right to control their own bodies, not the government. Under our administration, we will move to codify, put into law, Roe v. Wade. I will never nominate anybody to the Supreme Court or the federal bench who is not 100% pro Roe v. Wade. Trump and his friends want to cut funding for Planned Parenthood. We've got some bad news for them. We're going to substantially increase funding for Planned Parenthood. So 
So brothers and sisters, here we are in California two days before the primary. And in case, in case some of you haven't heard, California is the largest state in the country. You have more delegates to the Democratic Convention than any other state. And the candidate who wins here in California will likely be the Democratic nominee. So tonight, so today I am here to ask respectfully for your support on Tuesday. I am here to ask you to help us change the political culture in America, bring out your friends and your neighbors and your co-workers, get them to vote. Let us on Tuesday have the highest voter turnout in the history of California. Let us win the primary. Let us win the Democratic nomination. Let us defeat Donald Trump. And let us create a government and an economy that works for all of us, not just the 1%. Yeah. San Jose, thank you very much.